Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, where we talk on a weekly basis about things like cloud security, AI, and general cybersecurity career advice. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about cloud security careers and the different career paths that are available. And a lot of you reached out to me and they wanted me to talk about cybersecurity as a whole, you know, not just cloud security, the different career paths that are there in cybersecurity and which like which career is suited to them. So that's the reason I made this video today. Now, first of all, let's start with cybersecurity. I mean, cybersecurity, should you seek out a career in cybersecurity? That's a good question. So let's take a look. The global market for cybersecurity is forecast to grow to around 538 billion by 2030. That's in dollars, huh? So believe me when I say this is a very, very good industry to get in. It's very competitive. Anybody who tells you that you can just get like a job, you can just start your career in cybersecurity and immediately land a job, they are just pulling your leg. It's not so simple anymore. Okay, cybersecurity has become very, very competitive, but it's a very good career to get your foot in. But the problem comes once you decide uh, to start cybersecurity, you know, a lot of people when they start searching for jobs, they can't understand which career path to go where to start, should they go technical, non-technical, should they get a certification or degree, like where to go, right? What are the different career paths? So that's the reason for making this video today, the different cybersecurity career paths that are available to you in 2024. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel, uh, share this video, and so that maximum amount of people can benefit from it. Now, when we talk about career paths, we're talking about career planning. Right. And it's very, very important because it helps you to identify your goals. Right. It lets you know what you want to achieve. You're not just blindly following everybody. You know what you want. It gives you direction and focus because you'll have a key, clear career plan and you have, you know, where you want to focus on. And it will increase your motivation also because then you will know what you have to do. It will help you to make informed decisions because cyber security, believe me when I say it has a lot of career paths. OK. So that's what you want to focus on. And you want to decide which career path is right for you. You want to know what you're interested in and which area pertains to your strengths. So let's let's start looking at the different career paths which are there in cybersecurity. The first one I want to talk about is the cybersecurity analyst. Now, this person is on the front line. Okay, when I say the front line, he's the one who is looking at all the security products, right? Things like endpoint security, the firewall the VA or the IDS, IPS, most of the time, these are the people who have access to them, who are monitoring them, the ground level guys, you know, the people who are in the trenches when you look at it from the war, yeah, the front line, these are the people, these are the people who get contacted by the SOC team when there is any alert. And to, to become a cyber security analyst, this is traditionally like a entry level or a junior level position. You should have certifications like the CompTIA Security Plus, which I'll talk about, CISSP. Uh, or you can have a bachelor's in IT. A lot of time, you don't need certification. You're, just your IT experience can suffice. And what are the future career prospects for this? You, you can later on, once you have experience, like five, six years of experience, you can become a cybersecurity manager. Okay, you can actually have a team of cybersecurity analysts who are, who are reporting to you. Or even you have multiple routes. I mean, the experience you get as a cybersecurity analyst it will open up so large amounts of doors for you and you can choose multiple routes which are available to you. The second one is the cloud security engineer. And if you follow this channel, you know, I'm, I'm like a cloud security guy. So I always try to focus on cloud security, but cloud computing is getting more and more popular, right? More and more companies are moving to the cloud with the AI craze. So many companies are moving towards the cloud and they want to like move their workloads there. So that's why you are the demand for cloud security engineers is there. You need to know the cloud, obviously. You need to know things like automation, cloud configuration, the platforms, infrastructure as code, right? Ideally, you should have one cloud provider certification like AWS, Azure, or some certification, some agnostic certification like the CCSK or the CCSP. And like I said, there's a huge market for cloud security engineers. Because they're not enough, uh, honestly, they're not enough good people who, who are really technical when it comes to the cloud. And like I've mentioned before, I've made a complete video, I'll link it here. AWS, Azure, Google, all give free limited access to the environments. They give you sandboxes where you can play around with. And I also recommend to get hands-on because this is a technical role and you're expected to be able to navigate the console and do technical things easily, right? And the future career paths are amazing. You can become a cloud security manager, head of cloud security. You can go work in a big tech company like AWS, Google, those sort of things. So the cloud security market is very, very hot. It's very, it has a lot of good prospects there. 
what else is there? The stock analyst. Now, the stock analyst, if you've ever worked in any company, you know, uh, despite a company's best security efforts, security incidents always happen. Okay, something like is going to happen. And as a stock analyst, you'll be monitoring your company's network, workloads, everything to, f to find out if any issues are there, right? Incident response. So if you like, you're a good fit if you work well under pressure and you like, you know, diving deep into problems, forensics, you, you have a like very focused attention to detail. You like looking at forensics, those sort of things. So your skills you need, you know, to incident response. The SIEM tools are very, very important. The ability to create playbooks. And scripting always helps. And of course, Excel. A lot of people don't know, but Microsoft Excel comes in a lot when it comes to analyzing incidents. Okay, because of the amount of forensic work you have to do. And ideally, you should have a certification from a very popular, some SIM tool like Splunk or any others. Okay, but yeah, like Datadog and those sort of things. And certifications are the this GIAC, Certified Incident Handler. You have EC Council, Certified Incident Handler. A lot of different certifications are there. And the future career paths are pretty amazing. Companies will always need people to lead their incident response. No matter how much AI comes in, companies are not going to talk to an AI when an incident happens, when a DDoS attack happens. They want somebody to explain it to them. And if, so the future career paths are great. You can become a head of SOC. You can become a head of incident response, all sort of things you can do. Okay. What else is there? So a new one I wanted to add this year is, of course, AI machine learning security engineer. I don't know about you. I'm in the UK and in London and a lot of jobs have started coming in. This is still new. So this is going to take time. But yeah, you should, if you're interested in this, you should start having machine learning, AI platforms, AI specific attacks. I have a lot of courses there on Udemy. You can check that out. Uh, you should have ideally a good foundational knowledge of machine learning. This is not something you can just jump in and start like, uh, you know, uh, trying to understand. You should have a good foundational knowledge of AI, what machine learning is, what supervised, unsupervised learning is, what are the different algorithms, right? And a security certification like uh, like the CompTIA or CCI SSP will help you out. And the future career paths ideally will become the head of AI security. This is, like I said, this is still very, very new. These, these things are still forming. There is no dedicated security certification for AI professionals, but it is going to come without any doubt. Okay, because of the number of regulations and everything that is coming out. So start looking at this if you are interested. Okay, what else is there? Penetration testing and red team. So this is like, you know, uh, I'm sure everybody who has worked in a tech company, you would have looked at people who do penetration testing, red teaming. They focus on, you know, uh, simulating what an actual attack will look. They do penetration testing on networks, computers, even applications like AppSec people. And you want to find potential weaknesses, right? So that before attackers do. So you need to know scripting, programming, things like social engineering, and above all, motivation. You need to have that motivation because this is not something a nine to five job. These people are like crazy. They work 24 seven. They, they have that burning passion to break into like uh, systems, right? So this is something you, if you're interested, you should look at it. Don't just, what you call, do it because you think the salary is going to be good, okay? You But your skills, you should have knowledge of those open source tools right? Certification like the Certified Ethical Hacker or the CompTIA Pen Trust or CSP. And the future prospects are very, very good for this. You can, the most money I've seen people making through freelancing, independent consulting, or if you like to work in a company, you can become the head of security assurance, the head of security testing, but there's a lot of money to be made, right? And uh, usually with the AI systems coming in, you now you have new types of AI attacks happening. So to be a successful, but remember, to be a successful penetration tester, whether it's applications or infrastructure, you need to have a real passion. Like I said, please, and I keep reminding people, this is not a job for people who like the nine to five. Okay. And uh, this is something for people who have that utmost passion. But the good thing is, if you're good at this, you don't even need to have a nine to five job. You can become a full-time freelancer consultant and get paid like huge amounts of money. So slowly as we are moving up now, now this is the most senior level positions, which is the cyber security architect. Now, the cyber security architect is somebody who designs, implements, uh, you know, security networks. They design them and it's somebody who has like a bachelor's degree and significant amount of experience because you need to know tools, things like threat modeling. You need to know security protocols, how they communicate and the ability to look at the big picture. OK, you need to be able to present to, to management and do documentation. So this is not a junior level position. You need to know it's like certification on TOGA of the architecture, CISSP, and most importantly, experience. And later on, you can become a manager. You can become the head of security engineering. But like I said, this is a more advanced role because you need to have that experience 
to look at all the different applications, look at diagrams and do threat modeling. And you should be able to articulate your security problems to the stakeholders and make them explain. If you're sitting in front of the CISO, you don't, the ability to take those complex architecture diagrams, threat models and explain it to them. This is very much needed there. And okay, and moving on now, we are looking at the last one, which is the governance risk and compliance position. So most companies, they're expected to follow standards like PCI DSS, ISO 27001, GDPR, and you can have strict penalties and fines for non-compliance. So companies are eager to have professionals, you know, to make them compliant. And a security risk and compliance consultant, you, you're required to be an expert on these standards, do a gap audit against them, fix them. So this is usually sometimes not a technical role, but you need to have a good knowledge of networks and systems, okay? And if you have an audit or finance background, you can really help out here. And from the certifications, the CISA certification, C-RISC, or an ISO 27001 lead auditor, a PCI QSA, all of these will help you and open the door for you. And the future career path, you can become a head of GRC, depending on how regulated the company is. Or you can open your own consultancy and open, like, make lots and lots of money by companies will hire you to audit their environments, okay? So this is, again, another position if you want to take a look at. And last one we want to talk about is the cybersecurity manager. And if you want to move towards a more senior position after getting that experience and influence people, this position is for you, right? You want to be able to communicate, interact with stakeholders, the senior management, the board, budgeting. This is typically a position one level before the CISO. You should have certifications like the CISM or the CISSP, those intermediate to advanced level certifications. And you can become the head of cybersecurity or more traditionally the CISO. But like I said, guys, here, your technical skills are important, but not as important as the ability to communicate, the ability to present, uh, doing team management, doing budgeting. You, if you don't like budgeting, yeah, this might not be the fear. Do, uh, managing vendor, vendor management, the training programs for your teams, is all those things will come into play. Your soft skills becoming more and more important here. But the salaries are good. And this is typically one position away from become the CISO. Okay, so I hope you understood this. These were the different career parts. And now if you're like uh, thinking about, okay, good, this looks interesting. I like this career path or like, I like that career path. How to start? Well, it's not rocket science when it comes to cybersecurity. You should get a certification degree to show that you have a baseline like knowledge. Certifications are quick. Degrees are longer. Both of them are good, right? And uh, you should get experience. So I'm going to make a video about the detailed level of certifications that are there. All those certifications if you're starting out, okay? and how to get experience. So I'm going to make a complete video on that because I don't want to stretch this video out too long. But if you are just starting out, I want to mention, of course, the CompTIA Security Plus is always good. It's a very, very well-respected beginner level certification. It will give you an introduction to the fundamentals of cybersecurity. Okay. And it's a global certification that validates your baseline skills. So it, typically, I always recommend if you're a beginner, this is the first security certification you should earn because it will give you the core knowledge that you need. And if you are still like having been confused, guys, I've launched my own program, the Cyber Security Career Accelerator. This doesn't teach you about certifications, but it's more about how you can land your job, how you can improve your cyber security profile. And I link it here. Around 60 people have already signed up, which I'm very, very grateful to you. Thank you for that. But this is like if you want to uh, um, take it to the next level. So you already if you want to understand how to. Uh, what you call get a job, get experience, how to improve your LinkedIn, Twitter. I put all the things I do in my coaching, I put it here. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope, like I said, look at your strengths and which you are, which career path you're interested in. And let me know if you still need help. You can put in the comments and I'm happy to help you. Thank you very much, guys. I hope this was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video. Thank you so much.